your 10,000 casts into your musky fishing journey. You finally nail one in the eight, and then you shank the net job at the boat, you hit the fish with the net, and God forbid you just can't reach it with the net. Everybody, welcome back. If it can go wrong, netting a muskie, it absolutely is going to go wrong when you try to net a muskie. We're going to try and run through some of the most common mistakes that you guys and us are making. I'm going to throw myself completely under the bus on this one because we just, we all make these mistakes and we're going to try and show you guys why you have to work as a team when you're fishing with somebody to get these fish in the net and we're going to start right now. Before we get into the common mistakes, I want to talk about why it is you need to work as a team in the boat. I'm going to give you guys a couple examples of Dave and I. And because we fish together so much, we kind of know what we're going to do. Excuse me. And I have one example of Dave netting a fish and then one example of me netting the fish. Let's check out this example right here. This first one, I got a fish coming in. Dave's holding the bag. He doesn't force the net job. Gets in the bag real easy. There's a couple reasons. Let's slow it down right here. Dave could have went for the fish right here, but he didn't. He waited that split second, let go of the bag at the right time. And that really helped us get that fish in the bag super efficiently because we weren't forcing a net job. And the big takeaway there is hold on to the mesh on the handle and just let go of the mesh just before you're going to scoop the fish and don't rush that net job. Okay, let's get into a second example here where I'm netting the fish for Dave. And contrary to what I just said, I'm not actually holding the mesh, but there's one big reason here and I'll tell you as we get into this example. So in this case here, I don't hold the mesh because we have wind pushing and I know that the wind's gonna push the bag away from the boat. And again, I'm patient with the scoop. And as I slow it down here, you're gonna see that as Dave pulls the fish up towards me, I scoop a little bit and then I realize, nope, the fish is still too deep and I reset and then we work together efficiently as a team. And the big takeaway here is knowing your wind conditions and knowing if the wind's going to push the bag away from the boat or push the bag into the boat. And for us, the real big takeaway here is Dave and I working together. Even though Dave reels left-handed, and in most cases that would mean he would put his hand on the front of the rod to try and pull it in towards the net, we almost always pull to our right and we try to pull the fish into the bag going to the angler's right side and it works most efficiently if the net man is on the right hand side and we're going to cover that in a couple of the mistakes coming right up understanding the tendency of the angler on which way he or she is going to pull the fish is so important as a net man and a lot of times we lose a fish at the net and we instinctively blame the guy or the girl on the net and that's just so unfair because you have to work as a pair in this next example i'm gonna put myself under the bus i made a very poor judgment call actually I made two of them i positioned myself on the wrong side of the angler and i tried to force a net job and as you see what happens here it's really easy to see what i should have did different and how i should have asked the angler who I don't know if he's totally inexperienced but he doesn't have as much experience as us I could have guided him to a better position in the boat let's check it out all right we get hooked up at the front of the boat and I'm gonna work my way up here with the net and I get to his left side and I make the mistake right here of trying to force the net job and that fish swims off to the right I lose it I slow it down here and again, I should have put myself on the right-hand side of the angler. And you'll see right here, if even if I would have forced it from the other side of the angler, because he's right-handed, he instinctively pulls that fish to his right-hand side. And if I would have been positioned on his right, I would have, even with that fish coming unhooked, I would have probably had the bag in the position to get that fish. 
That was totally on me. I was in control of the boat at that time. And as a net man, you have to tell your angler sometimes to move this way or move that way or give you some room. It's not all about the angler, but the angler, you actually have to tell your net man, okay, we need to make some moves here so that we can more effectively try to get this fish in the bag. Probably the most common mistake I see in net jobs in a boat is that the angler is caught up in the moment and he thinks things are happening super fast. Oh, it's not hooked very good. It's right here. Scoop it. Get it. Why aren't you faster with the net? And again, it's just not fair to the net man. And in this next example, I'm not going to blame Mike here because Mike was trying to reel this fish in. But let's watch. The problem here is his drag was too loose for the size of fish that he had and he just could not manhandle that fish close enough to the boat and let's check out what happened here so this is a very common scenario while musky fishing the angler's working the fish he's getting it close to the boat there i'm trying to scoop it but i just can't reach it i've repositioned myself in the boat and i'm trying to wait till mike's pulling it towards me again pulling it to his right right here i'm reaching for it but no it's just not quite close enough and then i realized i got to do something different here and watch right here you're gonna see that after a couple failed attempts i extend the handle on my stowmaster and i'm able to finally reach way out and get this fish the big problem here is that Mike just could not get that fish in close enough because he didn't have his drag tight enough. Now that's not really a problem of Mike's. It just, it, it was a scenario that happened. I did not want to force that net job. So I was being patient, but then I realized that, okay, we're working together here. He can't get that fish to me. I'm going to have to do something different and try and get the net out to him the snowmaster, I could extend the handle. I was able to get out there and we got that fish. But that is a really big problem in musky fishing that the angler thinks that they're in control of the situation and they want to blame everybody else around them. And again, we have to work together. One of the craziest scenarios in netting a musky is when it hits the outside of the bag or it goes in the bag and the hook gets held high up on the rim and the fish somehow flips out and you're panicking to try and figure out what to do. The biggest thing there is to not panic. Got a couple of really cool examples here where things actually work out, but it could very easily not work out. Let's check out the first one here. So I got one hooked up on a sucker rig. Again, Dave's holding the mesh. He's holding it back. He's waiting for me. He's on my right side. And, okay, it's Tiger. It's coming up. Dave finally reaches for it. Perfect kind of net jump, but then it starts thrashing. And because one of the hooks was actually high up on the rim, Dave goes to put the fish back in the water, and the fish actually rolls itself out of the bag. And now it's actually on the outside of the bag. And we managed to get this one in, and it wasn't really that big of a deal to us. But in a scenario where you only catch a couple fish a year, you don't want to lose a fish in this type of situation. So you really have to remain calm and kind of let that situation come to you and know that sometimes you're going to lose a fish, but just remain calm there. Okay, this next one, I reached out to my buddy Matt Ridgway from Ridgway Customs, and he just posted this recently online, but I think it's a really cool example of solo fishing Something goes wrong with the net job. He doesn't panic. He's able to just calmly get through it. The fish does kind of cooperate, which helps. But let's check this out and you'll see. I'll just kind of let Matt talk through this clip because I think it's really cool. And you can just see that he stays calm, even though when he sees the fish, he gets kind of excited. Got to love that moment, especially when you're solo fishing. It It's so exhilarating when you catch. A fish close to the boat it's hooked up and now you got to do the net job anybody who's solo fish knows what it's like it's just it's an adrenaline rush like nothing else in musky fishing let's check out matt ridgeway that is a big big fish oh my god oh no
Oh, got him. Wow. That is a big fish. Upper 40s for sure. I just love that clip from Matt. Thanks for sharing that with us, Matt. I really appreciate it. I think there's a lot of really cool takeaways from that. One is he didn't panic. It hit the outside of the bag or the outside of the rim. The fish very easily could have got off the hook and swam away. But he didn't try to rush, didn't try to force it, didn't try to roll the net around on it. He was just patient and he just kind of rolled, you know, the, let the net go underneath the fish. Worked out really cool. So again, thanks for that clip. And I think that just shows you guys that patience is really key in that situation. Muskie fishing is a team sport. We always approach the boat as we're a team. And I think if you guys take that approach with the people you're fishing with, that it's not who catches it versus who doesn't or who nets it versus who doesn't. It's you work together as a team. It's easy for me to say that because Dave and I and Kyla and Richie, you know, the guys we fish with, we fish together a lot. We're fortunate to catch a bunch of fish. So we're not as worried about losing one or who catches more on one day versus who catches more on another day. For us, that doesn't really matter. It's about just getting together, having fun in the boat. If David catches five on a day, I'm super pumped. That means we as a team caught five. The next day, if I catch three, Dave gets none. He's super pumped too because, again, we caught it as a team. Check out this clip right here where... We work as a team, and you can hear us all cheerleading and giving instructions to what's happening in the boat when Ange gets her personal best fish. It's just such a cool clip because it it shows how much we all relay information in the boat to one another to successfully land a fish. Check it out. Look at this thing. <laughs> what are you at for length there, Ange? Oh, it's right here, it's right here, it's right here. Oh, it's oh, a, nice a tiger, one. I think. Yes, it is, it's your tiger. Oh, this, this. I don't, I don't, I don't. Come on, that man. Okay, it's gonna okay. Make, okay. Oh, yeah. Hold on, don't keep it. reeling. Got you got her. <laughs> keep reeling. Okay, it's almost there. Okay, yeah. baby, come on, okay, Dave. Baby, here it is. Here you come here, Dave. You got it, Dave! Holy shit! Beauty. I don't think you understand what the no, this is. No, this is all me. This is a monster tiger. It's a nice one. Being successful in muskie fishing is about, again, the teamwork, working together. But if you're the one on the net, Try and work with your angler. Which side do you need to be on? What's his or her's tendencies to pull the fish to the right or to the left? Hold the bag before you go to scoop in the water. Know your surroundings. Which way is the wind going to push the bag? All those kind of things. And always, always, always try to roll that bag under the fish. Don't try and force it from behind the fish or don't try to scoop it from the side. As soon as the fish you know, feels that net in the water, they're going to try and roll away. You always want to try and go head first. I mean, these are simple things, but these are things that will help you guys put more fish in the net. And no type of musky fishing is more important for the teamwork of the boat than sucker rigging because it can happen so fast. Check out the video right here where we just have a super fun day on the water. We put a bunch of fish in the boat and Things really work out for us. And until next time, 54 Bus is out of here. We'll catch you guys out on the water later.